Once we've identified stock losses or stock gains, we now need to account for them. And the stock card's always got to be updated to reflect um, any stock loss or stock gain. E.g., if the stock card says there should be nine units on hand, we do a stock take and there's only seven. Um, so that's a situation where we've counted less than there should be on hand. That's going to be a stock loss of two units. So how should this be recorded in the stock card? So if we've lost two units, that means there's going to be an entry in the out column because the out column is reflects all stock that's left the business. Um, if we have the following stock card, so at this point we've got four units at 70 and five units at 80. That's nine, but we actually did a count as only seven. So we've got to get two out of there. Which two do we take? Do we take the $70 ones, the $80 ones, or maybe average it out at 75? So we need a rule, and that rule for a stock loss is it will always be valued at FIFO. So looking at the stock card again, we've got four at 70, five at 80. Which two were lost? Well, we're going to assume that the ones that were first in, so in this case, that'll be two units at $70. Uh, that'll go in the out column and that'll leave a total here. You can see the stock take was seven units and that makes sense because that's what we've got in the balance column there. The business has basically suffered a stock loss of $140. How do we account for that? So that's the stock card part and we've got to realize that a stock loss is actually an expense. So going through the characteristics of an expense, let's apply them to a stock loss. There's an outflow of economic benefits, and in this case, the outflow is the stock that's been lost from the firm's inventory. There's going to be a decrease in assets, in this case, the stock control asset. And overall, there'll be a decrease in owner's equity. So the effect on the accounting equation here is we're going to have stock control go down because there's less stock. There'll be no effect on liabilities. And lastly, owner's equity or capital will go down 140 because stock loss is an expense. How's that going to get recorded or where for a start? It'll be done in the general journal. So what we'll do is we'll have a debit to stock loss because it's an expense. Expenses go up on the debit side. Credit to stock control. An asset is decreasing, so assets go down on the credit side. We're doing a ration and let's post that. We've got a debit to stock loss. Credit to stock control. Let's get our narrations right. We're using stock control in our narration, not stock. And again, with the narration, we want to make sure that non-negotiable is the memo number, but we do want to have as much info on the rest of it as we can. So in this case, we need to take probably two out of the following three things, the type of unit, in this case shoes, the number of units, in this case two, and the cost of those units, in this case 70. So anything short of that, you run the risk of not getting the mark for a narration. What about a stock gain? Well, again, the stock card's got to be updated. Yeah, the stock card says there should only be 13 units, um, but we do a stock take and we count 16. The problem there is we've gained three units, so what we need to do is account for that. Um, in the stock card, that will be an in. We have gained three units. So looking at the stock card at the moment, it says we've got three at 40, and 10 at 30, that's 13 units, but we did a count and there's actually 16. So our question is, well, how do we value them? Are they valued at 40 or 30 or 35 or so on? So the answer here is a little bit different to all the other ones. We've applied FIFO for everything so far. We're actually gonna apply a different rule. We are gonna apply the lowest cost of stock on hand. So only the stock that's on hand at the moment, whatever the lowest one is, we're going to value any stock gain at that amount. So looking at the stock card here, we've got three at 40, 10 at 30. So the first stock in was the $40 units, but that doesn't matter. For a stock gain, we pick the lowest. So the lowest valued stock on hand at the moment are the $30 units here. So in this case, we're going to say the three units come back in at $30. And then what we do is we add them back to the pile. We say we had 10 here at 30. We're adding in the three here, and that'll give us 13. They attach themselves to the bottom of the pile um, of the last thing stock in this case, which was the $30 units. So basically what we have is a stock gain of $90. How are we going to account for that? That's going to be a revenue, and relating that to the characteristics, a stock gain is a revenue because there's been an inflow of economic benefits. In this case, we've gained stock. 
there's going to be an increase in assets, in this case the stock control asset, and overall there'll be an increase in owner's equity. Looking at the impact on the accounting equation, I've got an asset called stock control going up 90. I've got no impact on liabilities. And lastly, I've got the owner's equity going up 90 because the revenue has gone up. That's going to get recorded in our general journal. So we'll have a debit to stock control because I've got more of it. Credit to stock gain because it's a revenue and a narration. Posting our entry, we'll do a debit to stock control because stock is going up. We have more of it. Credit to stock gain because it's a revenue. Revenues go up on the credit side. Getting our references right. Again, we always want to put in stock control and not stock. And then we've got our narration where, again, we want some detail. We want the type, in this case, a hat. The number of units, in this case, three. The cost of the units, in this case, 30. And the memo number, which records all of this detail.